Good morning, everybody. I need to check if I'm sideways again or if I'm facing the right way. My phone seems to be misbehaving lately. Okay, I have the impression I must be sideways, so I better turn it around. Okay. to the right way this time so good morning everybody um, if you'd like to relax in whatever manner is comfortable for you and uh, we'll wait a moment for others to join us you're listening listening to Deborah Pramal the essence at the moment and that's the Gayatri mantra lower that for a moment. Good morning everybody. It's um, Thursday the 20th of May and I'm Stephanie speaking to you from Camberley in Surrey um, on behalf of the Harry Edwards Healing Virtual Harry Edwards Healing Sanctuary today. So welcome to our Healing Minute and um, if you'd like to we'll start off with a short meditation to, of protection to lead us into our Healing Minute. I'll just lower that a touch more. So in your mind's eye, if you'd like to make yourselves comfortable, however is, is safe for you at the moment. And in your mind's eye, see a beautiful object in front of you. It doesn't matter what it is. It could be a crystal, it could be anything, whatever is meaningful to you. Simply notice its color, its shape, and its size. And when you see it clearly, imagine another one identical to that behind you. And then one either side. So you're surrounded by the beauty and energy of these objects. They will protect you on this journey today. So take your mind to the soles of your feet and imagine roots going down into the earth. The earth feels warm and inviting, supporting and nourishing. Allow this earth energy to move up slowly through your body to the abdomen. Then taking your attention to the top of your head Feel a light flowing in through the top of your head and down through your body to the abdominal area. As the earth energy and the light energy mingle, direct it up and out through the top of your head like a fountain of healing energy and light. See it flowing out and over your entire being 
encompassing the objects you have surrounding you, helping to sweep away everything you no longer need for today, anything you no longer have use for today. This flow of energy is clearing and cleansing your very being. So we'll take a quick moment just to feel part of this flow of energy. When it's time to return, feel the light and the earth energy gently fade away and let those protective objects return from wherever they came. And take some deep breaths and bring yourself back into the room as we prepare ourselves for our attunement and grounding for the healing minute. We give thanks that we are gathered here today and we ask that our homes be filled with love, light and healing energies. Surround us in protection as we open our hearts and expand our consciousness to allow the flow of love and healing to come through us. As your crown chakra opens, allow a column of pure white light to flow down through your body. Feel the balance and harmony within your body as the earth energy rises up through the soles of your feet and your base chakra. Feel your connection to the universal source of pure, unconditional love, balanced by the nurturing, protective love of Mother Earth, a Mother Earth. And now we'll say a couple of the uh, sanctuary prayers. I'll start off with, touched by angels. We are touched by angels and walk her angels tread. They will guide us, walk beside us through the days ahead. In the hours of darkness, when our dreams have flown, they bring hope and healing. We are not alone. In our times of doubting, still they understand. And forever touched by angels, we walk hand in hand. And the Harry Edwards prayer. May I be thankful for all the blessings I already have. Grant me relief from pain and sickness. Protect me from all ills and grant me good health in the days to come. Remove all causes of imperfection and bring your healing ministers close to me so that I may be conscious of their presence and so receive guidance and inspiration. Grant me courage and fortitude to overcome all adversity. Let me be conscious of your strength in all times of need. Grant me confidence to overcome my fears and not to anticipate harm. Teach me how to live rightly in your sight, to do only that which is right and true. I pray that good guidance and right influencing will inspire all your peoples to be as brothers, one to the other, and that peace shall endure for all time. And as we are going into our healing minute today. I'd like if we could remember the conflict in Israel and Gaza and send our love and healing to that. So if we could ask for healing, for peace and reconciliation for the current situation in Israel and Gaza. And as we go into our silence, we ask that all those whose names we hold in the distant healing folder, the Harry Edwards distant healing folder, your own distant healing folders, that they may receive healing for their highest good. We also request healing for their family and friends. May they all be placed in the healing light, not forgetting animals or sentient beings. And may they all be placed in the healing light and receive what they're allowed for their highest good. And uh, I'll just give a little gong and another one in, in a minute's time. Thank you. 
Thank you for joining us for our Healing Med Minute today and our thanks and blessings for your help and to all our friends in spirit. Thank you for sharing that beautiful energy. So otherwise, um, notices. So tomorrow is Friday. Martin's taking the Healing Minute. Saturday we'll have Alan. And on Sunday evening at 7.30 p.m., Lyndall Demere is joining us from California for a guided meditation, which will be on Zoom and Facebook. And as usual, all the details are on our site, our Facebook and our website. Next Thursday, the 20th of May, John Phillips is taking an afternoon meditation. Uh, 27th of May, sorry, John Phillips is taking an afternoon meditation. And again, all details will be on our Facebook site and our web healing website. And as you know, the Harry Edwards Sanctuary is now open for appointments only at the moment. And uh, we'd love to see you if you can manage to get around there. The bluebells still look magnificent. The grounds look lovely. And if you're anywhere in the, within the vicinity, it's well worth the visit. So do pop in. We'd love to see you. So today um, I have a reading, I'm going to read something from a very well-known book. It's called um, Conversations with God by Neil Donald Walsh. Now you may have, I'm sure a lot of you will have heard of this, but just for, for those who haven't, uh, Neil Donald Walsh was experiencing a very low point in his life when he decided to write a letter to God venting his frustrations. What he did not expect was a response. And I find this very amusing because it's irreverent, but in a fun way and in an amusing way. And um, so basically he had these conversations. One, one day he was talking to God as he, as he felt and he received a reply. And three years later, after many conversations, he wrote this first book of Conversations with God. So I'm just going to read part of chapter five. And I found it quite interesting, so I hope you do. You'll never, you'll never think of the Ten Commandments in the same way again. <laughs> so, he's, uh, so, what is the true path to God? Is it through renunciation, as some yogis believe? And what of this thing called suffering? Is suffering and service the path to God, as many ascetics say? Do we earn our way to heaven by being good? Or, as so many religions, as so many religions teach, or are we free to act as we wish, violate or ignore any set of rule, set aside any traditional teachings, dive into any self-indulgences, and thus find nirvana, as many New Agers say? Which is it? Strict moral standards? or do as you please. Traditional values, or make it up as you go along. The Ten Commandments, or the Seven Steps to Enlightenment. You, and so God replies, you have a great need to have it to be one way or the other, don't you? Could it not be all of these? He said, I don't know, I'm asking you. So God replies, I will answer you then, as you can best understand. Although I tell you now that your answer is within. I say this to all people who hear my words and speak, seek my truth. Every heart which earnestly asks, which is the path to God, is shown. Each is given a heartfelt truth. Come to me along the path of your heart, not through a journey of your mind. You will never find me in your mind. In order to truly know God, you have to be out of your mind. Yet your question begs an answer and I will not step aside from the thrust of your inquiry. I will begin with a statement that will startle you and perhaps offend the sensitivities of many people. There are no such things as the Ten Commandments. Oh my God, aren't there? No, there are not. Who would I command myself? And why would such commandments be required? Whatever I want is, Nespa. How is it therefore necessary to command anyone? And if I did issue commandments, would they not be automatically kept? How could I wish something to be done so, so badly, that I would command it, 
and then sit by and watch it not be so? What kind of a king would do that? What kind of a ruler? I am simply and awesomely the creator. Yet the creator does not rule, but merely creates and keeps on creating. I have created you, blessed you in the image and likeness of me. And I have made certain promises and commitments to you. I have told you in plain language how it will be when you become as one with me. You are, as Moses was, an earnest seeker. Moses too, as you do now, stood before me, begging for answers. O God of my fathers, he called, God of my God, deign to show me, give me a sign that I may tell my people. How can we know that we are chosen? And I came to Moses, even as I have come to you now, with the divine covenant, an everlasting promise, a sure and certain commitment. How can I be sure, Moses asked plaintively, because I have told you so, I said, you have the word of God. And the word of God is not a commandment, but a covenant. These then are the Ten Commitments. You shall know that you have taken the path to God, and you shall know that you have found God, for these will be the signs, these indications, these changes in you. You shall love one, command commitment number one, you shall love God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul. And there shall be no other God set before me. No longer will you worship human love or success, money or power or any symbol thereof. You will set aside these things as a child sets aside toys, not because they are unworthy, but because you have outgrown them. And you shall know that you have taken the path to God because, number two, you shall not use the name of God in vain, nor will you call upon me for frivolous things. You will understand the power of words and of thoughts, and you would not think of invoking the name of God in an ungodly manner. You shall not use my name in vain, because you cannot. For my name, the great I am, is never used in vain, that is, without result. Nor can it ever be, and when you have found God, you shall know this. And I shall give you other signs as well. Three, third commitment. You shall remember to keep a day for me, and you shall call it holy. This so you can do not stay long in your illusion, but cause, rem cause yourself to remember who and what you are. And then shall you soon call every day the Sabbath, every moment holy. You shall honour your father and your mother, and you know you are the Son of God when you honour your father, mother, God in all that you say or do or think. And even as you so honour the mother, father, God, and your father and mother on earth, for they have given you life, so too will you honour everyone. You know you have found God, oh, so commitment number five, you know you have found God when you observe that you will not murder, that is willfully kill without cause. For while you will understand that you cannot end another's life in any event, as all life is eternal, you will not choose to terminate any particular incarnation, nor change any life energy from one form to another without the most sacred justification. Your new reverence for life will cause you to honour all life forms, including plants, trees and animals, and to impact them only when it is for the highest good. And these other signs will I send you also, so you may know you are on the path. Number six. You will not defile the purity of love with dishonesty or deceit, for this is adulterous. I promise you, when you have found God, you shall not commit this adultery. 7. You will not take a thing that is not your own, nor cheat, nor connive, nor harm another to have anything, for this would be to steal. I promise you, when you have found God, you shall not steal. 8. Say a thing that is not true, and thus bear false witness, nor shall you do that. And nine, nor shall you covet your neighbour's spouse, for why would you want your neighbour's spouse when you know all others are your spouse? Ten, covet your neighbour's go neighbor's goods, for why would you want your neighbour's goods when you know that all goods can be yours, and all your goods belong to the world? 
You will know that you have found the path to God when you see these signs. For I promise that no one who truly seeks God shall any longer do these things. It would be impossible to continue such behaviours. These are your freedoms, not your restrictions. These are my commitments, not my commandments. For God does not order about what God has created. God merely tells God's children, this is how will you, you will know that you are coming home. Moses asked in earnest, how may I know? Give me a sign. Moses asked the same question that you ask now, the same question all people everywhere have asked since time began. My answer is likewise eternal, but it has never been and never will be a commandment. For who shall I command? And who shall I punish, though should my commandments not be kept? Who shall I pun punish, should my commandments not be kept? There is only me. So the author replied, so I don't have to keep the Ten Commandments in order to get to heaven. And God replied, there is no such thing as getting to heaven. There is only a knowing that you are already there. There is an accepting, an understanding, not a working for or a striving. You cannot go where you already are. To do that, you would have to leave where you are, and that would defeat the whole purpose of this journey. The irony is that most people think they have to leave where they are to get to where they want to be. And so they leave heaven in order to get to heaven and go through hell. Enlightenment is understanding that there is nowhere to go, nothing to do, and nobody you have to be except exactly who you're being right now. You're on a journey to nowhere. Heaven, as you call it, is nowhere. Everybody says that. Everybody says that. It's driving me crazy. If heaven is now here, how come I don't see that? Why don't I feel that? And why is the world such a mess? I understand your frustration. It's almost as frustrating as trying to understand all this, as is trying to get someone to understand it. Whoa, wait a minute. Are you trying to say that God gets frustrated? Who do you suppose invented frustration? And do you imagine that you can experience something I cannot? I tell you this, every experience you have, I have. Do you not see that I am experiencing myself through you? What else do you suppose all this is for? I could not know myself were it not for you. I created you so that I might know who I am. Nor would I, now I would not shatter all of your illusions about me in one chapter. So I will tell you that in my most sublime form, which you call God, I do not experience frustration. Phew, that's better. You scared me there for a minute. But that's not because I can't. It's simply because I don't choose to. You can make the same choice, by the way. Well, frustrated or not, I still wonder how it could be that heaven is right here and I don't experience it. You cannot experience what you don't know. And you don't know you are in heaven right now because you have not experienced it. You see, for you, it is a vicious circle. You cannot, have not found a way yet to experience what you do not know. And you do not know what you have not yet experienced. What enlightenment asks you to do is to know something you have not experienced and thus experience it. Knowing opens the door to experience and you imagine it is the other way around. Actually, you know a great deal more than you have experienced. You simply don't know that you know. You know that there is a God, for instance, but you may not know that you know that. So you keep waiting around for the experience. All the while you keep having it, and yet you are having it without knowing, which is like not having it at all. Boy, we're going around in circles here. Yes, we are. And instead of going around in circles, perhaps we should be the circle itself. This doesn't have to be a vicious circle. It can be a sublime one. So is renunciation a part of the truly spiritual life? Yes, because ultimately all spirit renounces what is not real 
and nothing in the life you lead is real, save your relationship with me. Yet renunciation in the classic self of self sense of self-denial is not required. A true master does not give up something. A true master simply sets it aside, as he would do with anything for which he no longer has any use. There are those who say you must overcome your desires. I say you must simply change them. The first practice feels like a rigorous discipline, the second a joyful exercise. There are those who say that to know God, you must overcome all earthly passions, yet to understand and accept them is enough. What you resist persists, what you look at disappears. Those who seek so earnestly to overcome all earthly passions often work at it so hard that it might be said this has become their passion. They have a passion for God, a passion to know him. But passion is passion, and to trade one for the other does not eliminate it. Therefore, judge not about which you feel passionate. Simply notice it, then see if it serves you, given who and what you wish to be. Remember you are constantly in the act of creating yourself. You are in every moment deciding who and what you are. You decide this largely through the choices you make regarding who and what you feel passionate about. Often a person on what you call a spiritual path looks like he has renounced all earthly passions, all human desire. What he has done is understand it, see the illusion and step aside from the passions that do not serve him. All the while loving the illusion for what it has brought to him, the chance to be wholly free. Passion is the love of turning being into action. It fuels the energy, the create yes, the engine of creation. It changes concepts to experience. Passion is the fire that drives us to express who we really are. Never deny passion, for that is to deny who you are and who you truly want to be. The renunciate never denies passion. The renunciate simply denies attachment to results. Passion is a love of doing. Doing is being experienced. Yet what is often created as part of, do, of doing? Expectation. To live your life without expectation, without the need for specific results, that is freedom. That is godliness. That is how I, believe, how I live. Ah, so you're not attached to results? Absolutely not. My joy is in the creating, not in the aftermath. Renunciation is not a decision to deny action. Renunciation is a decision to deny a need for a particular result. There is a vast difference. So that's Conversations with God, Neil Donald Walsh, uh, book one. Um, yeah, I think uh, he, uh, all his books are absolutely brilliant and it's interesting to notice how he chats with God um, as though he's talking to his next door neighbour or his friend down the road. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's, very, it's very amusing because it's so down to earth. And I must say I prefer the word commitments to commandments because I don't think any of us like being told what to do. We like being given the option and understanding the outcome of whichever choice we make. Personal opinion. So um, thank you for listening to that. And at the moment, we're back to Devra Pramal with her, um, with the essence. And this particular track is called Shima Shima, as I think you'll have picked up by now. So uh, before we close today, would you like to Ground yourself, take your mind to the soles of your feet and feel those roots going deeply down into the earth. If you wish, you may embed them in a crystal in the centre of the earth. And if you would like to just close your chakras over, think of them as flowers, petals that have opened and petals that are now closing over, not tightly, but just sufficiently for your needs. So we can go from the base, which is red, sacral, which is orange, and the abdominal area, which is uh, solar plexus, which is yellow, up to the heart, green, pink, through
throat, blue, third eye, indigo, and crown, purple, white, violet, or whatever colours are right for you. And you should already be protected from a little opening meditation. So thank you very much for joining us today. Um, I'm not going to be here the next couple of Thursdays, so you'll have some new faces, which will be interesting and fun. Um, so enjoy that, and I'll see you in a few weeks' time. So love and blessings to all, and thank you for joining us again, and take care. Bye-bye now.